Hey, what's up guys? Flatpak Effects here, back with another tutorial, and today we're going to be making this solar system. So stick around, you're watching Flatpak Effects. So welcome back to the tutorial. Now in my last tutorial, I showed you how to make this spinning 3D Earth inside of After Effects. Now I've had a heap of positive comments and questions regarding that tutorial. So I thought I'd share with you a few more things we can add into our scene and also a few more techniques that we can do to sell this overall effect. So in this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run you through how to make a few more planets. First of all, we're gonna create the sun and I've got a few other planets here. Like I've got the moon, we're gonna create Venus, I've got one of Neptune and one of Mars as well. So before I run through how we actually make these, you're going to need to go and download a few files. So as always, I've put the links in the description below and I found more of these high res planet maps through a website called Solar System Scopes. So a big shout out to those guys for letting us download these textures for free. And all the links are in the description below. All right, so once you've imported all those into After Effects, we're gonna start by turning them all into individual compositions. So I'm gonna grab each layer at a time. So I'm gonna start with my sun. And I'm simply just gonna drag it onto this button here, create a new composition to that size. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna right click and create a new composition here. Now I'm gonna call this one solar system and I'm gonna make sure this is set to 1080, 25. Set the duration to be about 30 seconds. Now before I hit okay, we're gonna go over to the 3D renderer and make sure this is selected as classic 3D. That's really important because it'll make a big difference when you come to actually rendering in this composition and then hit okay. All right, next I'm just gonna drop my sun layer straight in. Now it's obviously gonna be huge when we drop it in because the map is really large for the sun, but I'm gonna select my layer and then come up to effect down to perspective and I'm gonna add this, the CC sphere. That's gonna turn this one straight into a round ball. Next, I'm just gonna go back to my project and add in our background layer, which I've also included, which is this star map, which is a really high res star map that I'm gonna drop in the background. I'm just gonna scale it up slightly just to fill. Now for our sun, the sun doesn't actually have any shadow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna adjust a few of these settings on here. So I'm gonna come down to the light settings and I'm gonna change this to be about 57 but at the same time, I'm gonna turn my line height up to 100. And under shading, I'm gonna change this to be about 40. And I'm also gonna turn up this reflective to be about 17. So that's what we get there. It's a nice sort of glow. And I'm also going to come up to effect down to stylize and add this, the glow effect. Now I wanna change my threshold to be about 30, my glow radius to be about 36 and I want to change this to be on top, and then that's done. So that just gives us a really nice glow to our sun there. All right, so that's the first one done. So now I'm gonna add in my next planet. So I'm going to come over to my Venus layer. I'm gonna right click and go new comp from selection. Then I'm gonna drag this one back into my solar system. And this time I'm simply just gonna select my sun layer, come up to the effect CC sphere, copy this, and paste it straight in. And what I'm going to do here is just hit reset. So that's just gonna reset that layer so that we get our shading back. Now for this one, I'm gonna change the radius to be about 56. I'm gonna move this one slightly up here. And I also wanna come down to my light settings here and I'm gonna change the angle so that the light is reflecting the direction of our sun here. And the line height, I'm gonna to change to 62. And for shading, I'm gonna change this to be 23. So we end up with something like this. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm also going to come down to my effects and under rotation, I want to add a Y rotation keyframe. And I'm going to come across to about five seconds on the timeline here. And I'm going to make this about 20. I'm just gonna hit N on the keyboard just to bring the end of my playhead in. And that will just give us a really nice rotation on that planet in the back there. Now also while we're doing this, I'm going to create the same rotation on the Y axis for my sun. So I'm also going to make this 20. So that just gives it a nice rotation to our sun and our planet on the back there. 
Okay, so next I'm gonna grab my Mars layer. I'm also gonna create a new comp from selection and I'm going to drag this one on top. And this time I'm going to take the CC sphere settings from my Venus layer and put them onto my Mars. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna select this layer and just bring it down into frame. I'm just gonna enlarge the size here to be about 84. I'm gonna move this one down the front and this time I'm going to change the line height to be negative 10 and I'm gonna change the direction to be towards my sun. And I'm also going to drop the ambient down to about three down to there. Now the other thing I can add onto this layer is if I come up to effect, I can come down to brightness and contrast and I can add about 20 on the contrast settings. And I can also copy and paste this onto my other layers here. Now I'm just going to add in my next planet here. So I'm just gonna right click, create a new comp here, follow the same system, put this one on the bottom, gonna select my two settings, paste this in. and I'm going to adjust the line height and the light direction to match. Now I'm also going to drag this one on top because I want it to be in front of my sun and also drag this Mars layer above my sun as well. Now if I come down to my Venus layer and hit U on the keyboard, I can select these two keyframes and simply just select my Mars layer and paste this and then paste it onto my other planets as well. And this just gives it a nice rotation to these planets. Now all you need to do is just repeat this process for the other planets that you want. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and add in my other planets here to finish my solar system. Okay, so now I've finished adding in my additional planets following that same technique. Now the other thing that we can do to add a bit more life to our scene is create a bit more of a 3D camera movement rather than just a simple zoom. So the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna change this to two views horizontal. Now at the moment, we'll just have a mirrored image. But next, what we're going to do is turn on this 3D layer for all of our layers. And it's going to turn our images upright. So we're looking basically straight down on our image. And this one is looking front on. So next, I'm going to create a 3D camera. So I'm gonna right click new camera. And I want to set this to be about 28 millimeters and then just hit OK. Now, to get the effect, if I just select my camera just for demonstration purposes and zoom in and out, because every layer is a 3D layer, they're all sort of sandwiched together. So I'm looking at this as if I had a single piece of paper with all my images drawn on it, we would only be able to see a flat image. So we want to try and make this three dimensional. So the first thing we do is we select our star layer and we need to move this into the distance. So I'm gonna move this about here and I'm going to scale this up so that it fills my screen like this. So something like that. Next, I'm gonna select this planet and I wanna move this into the foreground. So I wanna move it closer to camera and I can also scale this one down and move it to the position that I want. And I'm also going to grab my Mars layer and I'm going to drag this forward and then reposition it here. Now my sun, I'm going to leave in the middle of the frame. The moon and earth, I'm only going to adjust them slightly forward because I'm pretty happy with their position. And my Venus layer, I'm going to move backwards and move it out slightly. And Neptune, I'm going to move right back into the distance. And I'm also gonna scale this one up slightly here. Now, if I just switch back to my main view and use my camera control by hitting C on the keyboard, just to show you, you can see how they're actually moving now. So they're moving at different speeds because some are closer to the camera and some are further away. So we get an almost a parallax effect. So we can use this to our advantage. If I create keyframes for my point of interest and position, I'm going to move to my orbital camera tool and I can actually start to move around my planets. Now, this is the limitation of After Effects because the images are flat, everything's two dimensional and we're trying to create an illusion that it's three dimensional. So we can only push our planets so far before we break that illusion. So keep that in mind. But if I go on a slight angle here, I'm then gonna move along to the end of my timeline. I'm gonna move across 
and I'm also going to move inwards. And if I just played through that, you can see we get this illusion that it's flying through the scene. Now, I probably have pushed it slightly too far here. So I'm just going to back this off slightly. I'm also going to back off this rotation until I get something that looks like this. So overall, that looks pretty good. Now, one other thing you could add in here is if I come over to the camera options, I can actually create a depth of field. So if I turn this on, first thing I'm going to do is just drag this aperture up. And then I'm gonna use the focus distance to move my camera's focus to and from in the scene. So one thing I could do here is if I went to the start, I could start by focusing on my front planet, create a focus point. Then at the end here, I'm going to pull focus to maybe the sun. So that just adds a little bit of depth of field into our scene. So you can mess around with those settings there if you wanna add a little bit more to your scene. So there you go, guys. I hope you've learned something new here. If you've got any more questions or comments, please feel free to put them down below. Apart from that, thanks very much for watching. And remember, Flatpak Effects is the Flatpak anyone can build.